Well, welcome to today's talk. It's Thursday, the 20th of January. Now, there's been an awful lot of debate about deaths in this pandemic. And there's a new Freedom of Information request release from the United Kingdom that shows the number of deaths actually solely attributable to COVID may be way lower than anyone had thought. And if this data applies to the UK, I'm sure it applies to the United States, Canada, European countries, all, all the other sort of what we might call advanced economy countries, it will also apply to, I would imagine. Now, it's, um, it's, it's interesting. Let's look at it. Um, so here we have, uh, this is the 30th of March 2020 to the 7th of January 2022. In other words, this is basically from, this is the time of the pandemic when people have been dying up to the 7th of January. Office for National Statistics, obviously, it's a couple of weeks behind, but it's not bad. Uh, 127,400 and, uh, sorry, 127,704 excess deaths above the five-year average. So we have often thought that this is perhaps the most accurate way to look at deaths. Not so much who died from what, when, but how many more people have died than we would expect. The difference being, of course, we've been living through this pandemic. So that's probably a pretty good indicator. Uh, but this next one here, official data. Now, this is deaths within 28 days of a positive test. Now, this is as of, this is data as of the 19th of January. So it's yesterday, always up to date, a, a day late. Well, <laughs> it's a day late. It's now the 20th. This is up to date as of the 19th. Death within 28 days of a positive test, um, 359 daily deaths, uh, which is good to see that's come down a bit lately, and 152,872 total deaths. So we have one figure for the total deaths there. 127,000. We have another figure for the total deaths there within 28 days of a positive test, 152,872. And then where COVID-19 is mentioned on the death certificate as a contributory factor to death, 174,000. So I've already got three different figures, but now we've got a fourth. And this fourth figure is just a little over 17,000 deaths. And um, I, I'm I'm doing this as a single video because I'm still processing this information. It's really quite, it's really quite profound. Now, this is from a freedom of information request. Deaths from COVID-19 with no other underlying cause. In other words, people that were otherwise healthy, that don't have heart disease, that don't have lung disease, that don't have diabetes, and yet died of COVID-19. Freedom of information request and the freedom of information request was answered by the Office for National Statistics and you can read the actual report there. Now, this actually came out last month and um, I've just discovered it yesterday. That's why I wanted to bring it to you now. There's been no mention of this whatsoever on mainstream media, um, at least on the BBC sort of ITV Channel 4 in the UK. And I haven't seen anything on the, on the US channels that I follow. So surprising surprising that they haven't picked this up because it's a, it's a huge story uh, for, for media to cover and they haven't deaths registered from 2020 and 2021 so death registrations for 2020 and 2021 uh, for deaths where COVID-19 was listed as the underlying cause of death as the underlying cause but had no other pre-existing condition recorded on the death certificate for England and Wales so this is just England and Wales data it's not actually for all of uk and this will be updated quarterly so this takes us up for the first three quarters so this is this this information is for deaths in um 2020 all of 2020 and the first three quarters that's up to september isn't it uh 2021 uh, and uh let's look at what it is and um without being melodramatic about it it's really quite surprising surprisingly low so here we have deaths for 2020. So the total deaths where COVID-19 was the only cause of death on the death certificate. Therefore, we can assume that the people didn't have comorbidities. So that's for 2020. The total deaths was uh, 9,400. Uh, 0 to 64 was 1,549. Over 65s was 7,851. And actually, the average age, when we take all these together... For, for, for the whole figures of combined, the average age was about 81.5 years or, or, or thereabouts. So even though these are over 65s, the vast majority of these were much older. So that was for uh, 
2020. And of course, that was the first year of the pandemic. We had no vaccines. Treatments were just being developed. Now, first quarter, January, February, March 2021, total deaths from uh, COVID-19, 6,483 for all of England and Wales, not to 64 years of age, uh, 1560, over 65, uh, 4,900. 23 total deaths and again the average age here was was around about that 81.5 year mark the average age much greater uh second quarter so it's january february march april may june um for uh, 2021 total deaths were 346 because of course we had a, a dip then not to 64 153 over 65 193 so pretty low uh the uh third quarter taking us up to September, total deaths 1,142, not to 64, 521, uh, 65 and over 630. So where COVID-19 is the only attributable cause of death, we see that the, uh, the rate of death is actually uh, remarkably low. Now, are still deaths, but it's much lower than we've been thinking. And it's much lower than mainstream media seems to be intimating. Therefore, 2020 in the first three quarters of 2021, total deaths from COVID alone, uh, 17,371. Of this, uh, of this, 13,597 were 65 or over. Of this 17,371 that we're talking about, 3,774 were under 65. And the average age of death from COVID over the whole time in the UK is actually a bit higher than I thought. Average age of death in the UK from COVID-19 in 2021. So this is 2021 data. 82.5 years of age. So the average person that died. So obviously that means a lot of people were over 82 and a half years of age to, uh, to make it up for an average for those that were under so that is the average age of death in 2021 in uh, that's actually for all of UK. So that's more than England and Wales. So that's all of UK there. Uh, 82.5 uh, years was the average age of death. And the total number of deaths where COVID-19 was the only attributable factor, 17,371. Average life expectancy in the UK. Well, it turns out that this figure here, <laughs> Is, is higher than the average life expectancy. Average life expectancy in the UK. So this is uh, 2018 to 2020. And of course, 2020 obviously <laughs> includes the first year of the pandemic. And the average there was 79 for men and 82.9 for uh, women. Um, and so as we see, the average age of death from COVID-19 was actually greater than the average life expectancy in the UK. Uh, this is um, it's really quite profound data, this really. 17,371 deaths where COVID was the only attributable cause. Um, now, these figures here, uh, this represents a fall of seven weeks for men and uh, an increase of half a week for females when we average out over the whole country. So it looks like uh, this reduction of seven weeks for men we can say there was a temporal correlation between that in 2020 and the start of the pandemic. Um, we would think it's very likely it's a causal correlation, but from that data, we can only say there is a correlation. So uh, they're, they're, they're the changes. And, and th that's in comparison to 2015 to 2017, which is the last full uh, data set. Uh, this is the first time we've seen a decline when compared to non-overlapping time periods since the series began in early 1980s. So it looks like the average age of death in men as a result of that year of the pandemic has gone down by uh, seven weeks. And the average age of uh, death for women has gone up by three or four days. Um, as of the end of September, so so we're taking this data as the third end of th the third quarter, end of September. So so what we're saying is, uh, as of the end of September, there's one seven three seven one deaths where COVID was the only attributable cause. Now, what's the official government data saying there? Within 28 days of a positive test, 
Up to the end of September, 137,133 people died. And the difference there is a factor of 7.9. So the official figures were pretty well eight times higher than those where COVID-19 was the only attributable cause of death. And I've just put the evidence for that there that I just uh, cut and pasted uh, yesterday. As of the 30th of September, official UK data, 137133 deaths within 28 days of a diagnosis versus the ones where COVID was the only attributable cause, 17371. Um, it's a massive difference, isn't it? So I um, thought that was pretty, uh, pr pretty interesting. Um, now let's just look at the uh, one more piece of information here. This is the excess deaths from cancer. Um, now this is from Professor uh, Carol S Sequoia, um, who is um, well, is is one of the leading oncologists in, in the world, uh, cancer doctors. Uh, former head of uh, cancer program at the World Health Organization. And I just got a brief resume of him. It seems he left the WHO because he didn't agree with some WHO uh, policies. I, I, don't, I can't remember the details, but the, the WHO were f changing apparently to focusing a lot on communicable disease. Whereas deaths throughout the world from cancer are, are, are everywhere. You see people dying of cancer at every country you go to. You see people dying of cancer, of course. Um he estimates, now he didn't give his working on this, so I would like to see a paper by Professor Sequoia on this, but he's gone public on this. Uh, probably an extra 50,000 deaths from cancer over the past 18 months you otherwise would not have had. That's a lot of people who have died or will go on to die of cancer. And of course the delayed diagnosis now, or the delayed diagnosis six months or a year ago, could be the death now next six months next year five years time because the cancer wasn't caught at an early stage uh, not to mention the amount of pain and suffering uh, that cancer can bring to the individual what are the reasons for this Fa failure to report symptoms early definitely been a factor difficulty getting to see a gp has been a factor for many fear of hospital admissions I mean, I, I, went, I went to my A&E &A &E department at the start of this pandemic and it was like, it was like the Mara Celeste. There was no one there. There was staff sitting around thinking, well, what's going on? Patients were, seemed to be frightened away uh, from visiting hospital. Where were the usual chest pains, the usual breathing difficulties? They were there, but in nothing like the same numbers. Were people frightened away? Um, fear of hospital admissions was a factor. Miss chemotherapy, miss radiotherapy, of course. And, and delayed diagnosis. And also bear in mind, 60, 6 million people waiting for NHS treatment at the moment. So really we have to combine, sort of take into account this disruption, 6 million people waiting for treatment on the NHS at the moment. 50,000 extra cancer deaths over the past 18 months. Or 50,000 cancer deaths that were initiated and will come to fruition over the next year or two. But were initiated by delays over the past 18 months. Uh, versus the official death figure, 137,000 within 28 days of a test. Uh, versus the ones where the only factor on the death certificate is COVID-19. People that died purely of COVID-19, uh, 17,371. Now, I don't want to be disingenuous about this because people always die for a variety of reasons. So someone that's had comorbidities for a long period of time, they'll get an infection like, like, like coronavirus infection. And that can be the thing that um, brings their death on earlier. But as we saw, the average reduction in deaths in men for, for 2020 was, uh, was seven weeks. So and, and the average age was it was 82.5. So how much time are we actually talking about here in terms of quality years of life? Um, probably not that many. Whereas um, if a 31 year old man with testicular cancer uh, misses a diagnosis, then that could have massive consequences. And I picked the age of 31 quite deliberately because the age of 31, the last time I checked, was the peak age of the uh, diagnosis of testicular cancer 
uh, in men. And of course, we know tragically breast cancer can occur in, 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 in really quite young uh, women. And the earlier it is caught, the, the better. So, yeah, it's not as simple as this. I'm not saying that it's only 17th hour only. I mean, we're talking about numbers here. We're actually talking about people's lives, of course. But I'm not saying it's only 17,371 people have died from COVID-19. But where that's the only cause on the death certificate, that's what the Freedom of Information requests uh, are saying. So that is worth thinking about, reflecting on. And um, that's about as far as my thinking has got on that, really. Um, but it is it is really quite profound. Now just noticed it's um it's actually quite spring-like out there today um it's not it's actually quite cold it's the 20th of january in the north of england but we'll have a look out the window and see if we can experience one of life's uh, better or one of life's great experiences really the sound of bird song let's just have a look see what we can see just swing this camera around if that's going to work there we go camera two <laughs> there we go and i'll put the microphone out see if there's any birds singing Often you get dogs barking and everything. <laughs> there you go. Well, I, I heard a little bit there. I hope you heard something as well. It's not quite as idyllic as it looks. There's like farmers' fields just beyond there, and then there's a there's a great big noisy industrial estate just a couple hundred meters in 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 that direction. So um, am I on the right camera now? Yeah, I'm on the right camera. So even though it seems quite when I do the videos, that's because I pick the time to do them. <laughs> Other times it is really quite noisy. Anyway, I thought that was a bit of an incidental. Can we hear the birds singing? Yeah, sometimes it's nice just to take the time and to listen. Thanks for watching this video.